So I have been using Tanstack Start for quite a bit right now. Actually, I've been using it since it was still in beta in production. And I've been really happy about it. But there's one thing that, to be honest, kind of bugged me in the beginning when I was just getting started using it. And that is the whole code execution model behind Tanstack Start. If you're new to my channel or you're just unfamiliar with Tanstack Start, it's just a full stack framework that allows you to create web apps really easily. It uses Tanstack Router under the hood, which means for those who have been using Tanstack Router to create client-side applications, this should feel extremely familiar and I would really advise you to use this framework. But actually what I wanted to talk to you about in this video is the whole code execution model in Tanstack Start, which is a bit confusing when you just get started. So the whole idea behind the code execution model in Tanstack Start is that the functions that you write run both on the server and on the client side, which is of course something that you normally don't expect from your framework. You normally have a clear separation between where your code runs, it's either on the client or on the server, and here it runs on both ends. And this is what they call isomorphic. So the code is isomorphic by default. Every function that you write runs on the server as well as on the client. Of course, you have the possibility to separate these two environments. You can have, or you can use create server only function, which allows you to run a function that can only run on the server and it would throw an error on the client. You can also create a function using create server function. I think I should zoom in a little bit. And this one just creates a remote procedure call. So on the server, this runs normally, I suppose, but on the client, so this is going to make an asynchronous request to the server. This is going to run on the server and the result is going to be delivered to the client. And for you as a user, all of this happens under the hood. It's all invisible to you, but it's just very useful. You don't need to create an API endpoint, anything like that. It's all done under the hood. Then there's also the possibility of creating client-only functions by using this create client-only function. So where things get most interesting is when we're talking about this create isomorphic function. And this allows you to create a function that behaves differently on the server and the client. This is right now a, a very simple example, get device info. And on the server, this is the value that you're going to get. And on the client, this is the function that's going to run. Obviously, you may think that you can achieve the same thing by just checking if window is undefined. But the advantage of using create isomorphic function, I mean, the first advantage is that it's tree shakeable. So on the client, you don't receive the code of running the server function and vice versa. So that's obviously really important. So that way you don't actually leak any environment variables from the server to the client. And the second advantage is that you get to do some really cool things that honestly, I just never thought of before. So what I did is to ask this question on Twitter, what are your use cases for test hacks? isomorphic functions. My first idea was to use them for Superbase. Basically, if you have some kind of loader in a route and you're going to have different Superbase clients on the server and on the client. This is obviously useful if you want to set some SEO data. So you want to load some data on the server so you can set the title and the description and even a picture for every route. So you can use this create isomorphic function to just define an environment aware super based client, which is just so useful. There's another example here coming from documentation. And this one shows how you can implement some kind of caching. So on the server, you can create files and save some data inside of them. And on the client, you can use local storage. And the responses here are actually really interesting. One of them is inside the official documentation of ORPC. They're using this create isomorphic function to configure the RPC link. And this is for the browser and server side rendering environments. So on the client, you're going to get this URL. And on the server, you're going to get this one. Another one that I found interesting is from corner app. And here they're using it to get the user agent. So on the server, you are grabbing the user agent from the request headers. And on the client, you're just grabbing navigator that user agent. Pretty cool. Since I just started working with these isomorphic functions, I think I'm still going to figure out some other cool ways we can use them in real life applications. If you have any ideas, please drop them in the comments. And by the way, if you want me to cover more Tanstack start uh, topics, 
just let me know in the comments and I'll gladly make more videos about it. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.